Hi everyone. Uh, tonight I'm going to show you how to take a Star Trails video with a film camera. This is a 35mm film camera. The same basic principle applies for other types of film cameras. Uh, what you're going to need is a few supplies. You're going to need uh, a camera, film camera. This is my trusty Pentax K1000. Any 35mm film camera with some manual controls will suffice. A preferably wide angle lens. The wider the better for this, and the reason is because we're going to, a star trail requires a very, very long exposure. With the wider angle the lens, the more subtle camera shake you could have. Let's say you're outside and you have a slight breeze. Well, if there's a little bit of camera shake on a wide angle lens, that's going to be uh, an acceptable level of camera shake versus if you were using something like a 150 or 100, 135 or even 300, heaven forbid, lens for this you would have a very, very narrow, almost non-existent margin of error for camera shake. So this is a 28 millimeter. Uh, I've used as wide as 18 millimeter for, uh, for Star Trails and had very good success with those. I've also done very well with 50 millimeter, and uh, I've used 50 to 55 millimeter on an APS-C camera, which uh, sort of kind of makes them function something in the range of a 75 millimeter. And that has worked out okay as well, but that's because I have a pretty beefy tripod. Uh, anyway, so the wider the better, that's the whole point of that. The other thing you're going to need is a camera that has... Let's zoom in here and refocus. Focus, focus. Wrong way, wrong way. Okay. So you can see that right there in the center, there's that little green B on the aperture, on the shutter speed dial. That stands for bulb. And what that means is that, let me make sure, first of all, there's no film in here. <laughs> Should have done that before I started the video. Okay, so with bulb, with bulb, when I push down the shutter release, the shutter opens, now it's closed. So I'll show you what that means in practice. Pop open the back here because of that. Oh, geez. This will give you a better idea of what's going on when you can see the light coming through. So, as long as the shutter is pushed down, the film plane is going to be exposed to light. So, that allows you to have effectively infinite exposures, or I'm sorry, exposure times. There's an air, a problem with that that has to do with film reciprocity. It's a little bit beyond the scope of this, of this video. So we're not real. We're not going to talk about the details of that. Uh, I will talk about film reciprocity in a in a future video about dry ice cameras. Um, but I want to do a little bit more technical research on the hows and whys of film reciprocity before I venture into that, which is another reason we're not talking about it in this video. At any rate, uh, so basically, from a technical perspective, what you need to do is have the camera stationary stationary, and have the shutter held open for an extended period of time. If you have a shutter with a T on it, you just push the shutter release once and then the shutter will stay open until you push it again, and that will, then it will close. Not a whole lot of um, SLRs have that T function. So there are a couple of different ways. There are a couple of different ways to uh, fiddling around here for a part I forgot to get. There's a couple of different ways to hold a shutter release down. Uh, the easiest, best way to do it is with a shutter release cable that has a lock on it so that the cable stay, keeps the shutter down, keeps it depressed. That's the best way to do it. If you don't happen to have one of those, here's how I do it on my, did it on this camera the other week. Put a rubber band over it this one's not strong enough. Put a strong enough rubber band over it, press it down, and the rubber band will keep it depressed for as long as you need. The other advantage to the rubber band that I actually kind of like is that it's not dangling off your camera like a release cable is, so in the wind it's not going to move back and forth and it's not going to risk shaking your camera. Actually, for this purpose, I think the, the rubber band is a slightly better option because you don't need to time this release down to the tenth of a second, so if you come back 
and you just move the rubber band, that'll be fine. Or if you really want to be very careful about not shaking the camera, cut the rubber band, that'll also be fine. And you won't get any camera shake relating to holding the shutter open. The next thing we need to do is to make sure that no light can come in through the eyepiece. Believe it or not, the light seal between the eyepiece and the film plane when the mirror is in the up position is not, is not perfect. So light could, on a long exposure could come in through your eyepiece, make its way through the pentaprism, make its way past the mirror even though it's up, and then cause your film to fog. So there's two ways to do that. For many makes of camera, you can buy this little 99 cent, that's how much this cost me, a piece of plastic to go over it, and that does a good enough job. For this camera, for the Pentax K1000 and any of the other K's and Spotmatics that have this exact same eyepiece, this works just fine. Uh, my Nikon N70 also has something that fits over the eyepiece. My Nikon F3 actually has a shutter that closes inside the pentaprism. It's really brilliant, works very well, and I never have to risk losing this, which I almost did four times in one night um, at the campground. Uh, anyway, so, so, uh, alright, so you're going to need to keep the light out the back, you're going to need to keep it stationary, you're going to need to keep the, sh the bulb down, or the, the shutter release down, and in bulb mode. Technically, that's what you need to do. The next thing you need to do is select a film. Most people will, I, I've seen using film for star trails, suggest using ISO 800. I think they're all insane. Uh, I'm not going to mince words, that's ludicrous. ISO 800 film is very grainy and low resolution, and um, unless you're taking a picture for the newspaper, there's no reason to use 800, in my opinion. I've used 100, 250, 400, and 50 for Star Trails. I have not gotten the 50 developed yet, but I'm not holding out a lot of hope, <laughs> honestly. Um, the 100 turned out very well. I did a four-hour exposure with 100 ISO AGFA. turned out very well. Then I also did, uh, with this camera, I put 400 uh, ISO in and bracketed the heck out of the shots. And what I mean by that is I did one at 3 minutes, 7, 15, 30, 45, and so on. Uh, I had another camera up there I did the same exact thing with and bracketed the shots over and over again. I haven't gotten these shots back yet from the... From the um, the 100, 100 ISO shots I did with this I haven't gotten developed yet either. But at the end of this video, I will show you what I did about six months ago with a 100 ISO AGFA black and white, and what I did a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago, with a 250 ISO Kodak Vision motion picture film that I developed in D76's black and white. Um, both of those worked extremely, extremely well. Uh, okay. So the next, so so now we've got the whole camera situated. Next, you'll need a tripod. This is a tripod base. Uh, I'd show you a tripod, but I'm using it to film this video. I actually have four. I just don't want to get another one and risk moving it around. But you'll need a sturdy tripod, and a sturdy tripod's going to be more than the twenty-five dollar one that they want to sell you at Best Buy or wherever. Uh, sturdy tripod's going to run you about a hundred dollars minimum, probably more than that. I have. Um, I have one, I have the same exact tripod in two different makes, so it's not an uncommon one. It's, it's nice and sturdy, it uses, oops, it uses a base plate that looks like this. Uh, I'm not huge on, on naming brands on my videos because they're not paying me to. So um, uh, if you see one that uses ba base plates like this, it's a pretty decent one. I'm very happy with both of mine. Uh, at any rate, then you'll want to calculate your exposure. And I'm not going to go into a ton of detail here about how to calculate exposure. There's lots of way, ways to do that online and people who know the math much better than I do. So calculate the exposure time. Make sure that when you're bracketing your images at least one of those falls within the range that they, that they provide. And then have fun with it. Take eight or ten different pictures in a night if you can. Try different positions, different angles, different lenses, different apertures. And I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. The most important thing is that it's film. It's not digital. So you're not going to get hot pixels. So you don't need to do things like image stacking and blending in order to get a high quality result. You can set up a camera, set up the picture, 
take the picture, go back to the campfire, or go inside and take a nap, set an alarm, come back when the alarm goes off, set up your next one and walk away. It's very, very easy to do low maintenance and a great way to get started at taking star trails photography. So, if this video was helpful to you, uh, give me a thumbs up. Just like that, thumbs up, yay! Also, if you'd like to see some more videos coming up in the near future, please subscribe to my channel over here, at least right now, over here. Uh, subscribe to that channel. I have about 50 more videos coming in the next year or so, and I'm always coming up with new ones. If you have any specific questions you have about photography stuff, leave it in the comments section, comments, and uh, I will respond to it. I'm pretty good about getting back fairly quickly. Uh, if you have any suggestions for videos, for videos, also leave those suggestions in the comments section, and uh, I will get back to those. And if I have the technical knowledge and equipment to, to, to address those, I will be more than happy to make that video for you. Next, here come some results. I'm going to make it look like I'm actually pulling them in with my thumb, even though I'm not. Do you see that? That was a nice fade.